What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and welcome back to part two of a series where we are trying to restore the Snyder Cut through our design skills by designing and building a prototype concept of a website where we feature the DC Cinematic Universe characters that are featured inside of the Snyder Cut and we're doing that inside of Figma. In the last episode, I did all the design work for the main layout of this concept. I came back through afterwards and recreated the rest of the screens. So now we have multiple of the Justice League characters ready. And now in this video, we're gonna animate it. We're gonna prototype it. We're gonna add micro interactions and smooth animations in between these artboards. It's gonna be a ton of fun and we're gonna use some complex techniques inside of Figma to do it. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, so we are back. We've built out the rest of our screens, or three more screens. So we have four characters. Each of them have their own screen. We have Wonder Woman, which is pretty cool. Uh, Cyborg and Batman. I found this other great image of Batman, kind of a side profile. And the Flash. Now, um, we're gonna do some basic prototyping and interactions, and then we're gonna do one massive interaction back and forth between the two. So let's start seeing the little things we can start doing interactions on. Um, I think we could immediately, we wanna be able to scroll inside of this one or inside of this text and actually scroll the text up, which is easy. We'll just come over to prototype. And since it's in a frame and the text you can see is overlapping or outside of the frame and the frame is clipping it, all we have to do is come in and put vertical scrolling on. Um, so that's really, that's the first thing we have to do. It's really, really easy. Um, and then we need to establish a prototype. So we could say, you know, on tap of Batman, uh, let's lead over to Batman. Now we have, yeah, excuse me, on click navigate over and we'll do that instantly, no problem. Cause now we have our little home prototype tab and we can press play and see what it looks like. All right, my prototype is loading up and let's just shrink this down a little bit so we can see everything. Um, we're able to scroll and because our prototype is actually, the background is on a frame, it is, it's actually staying fixed and then our prototype is able to scroll, kind of like a real website, which is really cool. But we're also able to come in here to the text and scroll up and down by rolling up and down or actually grabbing and moving our mouse around. So that's the first thing we could do really, really easy. Let's do a micro interaction over here on our watch the trailer section. So first thing we wanna do is everything's inside of the frame. We're gonna press command or control option K to make it into a component. Now it's a reusable component that we're able to reuse over and over and over. So what we'd probably wanna do is we'd want to move this off the screen and then we'd wanna put an instance of this thing back on the screen, okay? So now we can zoom in and tuck it behind where it was before and nobody's any the wiser. But now we have this master component that we can create an interactive component um, that will work everywhere we place it. So to do that, we're gonna create a variant first. We have our component selected and we're gonna come over to variant and press plus right over here, add new variant. Now it's gonna draw this awesome little variant box for us. And uh, this first one we're gonna call default and this second one we're gonna call, actually let's just select it, come over here to the name, the property value here, and let's call it hover, okay? We could add a little description or documentation if we wanted to. I don't think we really need to right now. So then what we're gonna do is change something about this, um, about this version. So how about we just increase uh, or decrease maybe a little bit of the opacity of the blue. And then why don't we come in here and hit K and just kind of make our play button a little bit, just a little bit bigger. And then let's add an effect of a drop shadow underneath the button, okay? So as you hover, it lightens, the button grows, a little bit of shadow, a little bit of dimensionality to the whole thing. And maybe even the whole thing would grow as well. Just just a little something, we're just gonna try it. I don't know, we'll see. Um, why don't we also space the text out just a little bit so we get a little bit of motion there. Then what we're gonna do is with the default selected, okay, we're gonna move over to our prototype tab and we're going to prototype from our default over to our hover state. And we're gonna say on hover or while hovering, we wanna change to the hover state, okay? And we want to smooth animate it, okay? Now we don't have to animate back because as soon as we're done hovering on it, it will release from our hover state and head back 
to our default state. Okay, so with that said, I'm gonna close this up. I'm actually gonna come up and play our prototype one more time from scratch and see if that works for us. We should be able to scroll over it and sure enough, we get a nice hover effect there. So why don't we just really quickly, I'm gonna put fit so we can see our entire prototype. Now we don't have to scroll anything, right? We could click over here on Batman if we want to, we don't wanna do that. We can scroll up and down in our text and as we hover over, we're gonna get just a little bit of animation for our movie trailer, which that's pretty cool. Uh, I like it, let's, uh, let's stick with that. Now, the next thing we could do um, is we said that we could have, if we wanted to, we could have taken um, these cards that are inside a frame and the frame is smaller than the contents, except we have unclipped those contents and we could, if we wanted to, move it behind and we could do the same thing. We'd say prototype, horizontal scroll, just like that, and then we should get immediate horizontal scrolling, which is actually, it's actually kind of nice. I like that a lot. So we just have our characters tucked behind our model here and we can scroll back and forth and then we'd be able to select anyone that we want hypothetically. So pretty cool. Starting to come to life a little bit, a little interactive. Now let's create a massive transition in between two of them. So we've created all these fun interactions. It's really, really good. Now maybe what we want to do is create a version of this so we could demonstrate what the animation would be like back and forth between two of our um, between two of our screens. So I'm gonna take this over here. I'm gonna create a new version, okay? I'm actually gonna put this on a new page called animation. And I'm gonna bring this and move it. So we just move to the page animation. And let's work off of this page here for our prototype. And that way we have all of our designs we'll be able to look at. Um, if you want a full-blown prototype, you can do that. But here, we're gonna have our designs we can look at, and then we're gonna have an example of one swap between um, those different characters, okay? So, with that being said, we're gonna need to add a few things here, okay? So, you can see we have our character info. I'm gonna put character info, and then I'm gonna put WW after it for Wonder Woman. And then we have our character, and then um, character, let's see, I'm gonna call this image and then I'm gonna put a WW after it, okay? So that we can differentiate between the two. Oh, also we're gonna to need to do the stats here, and then let's put a WW there as well. Let's move all of these up near each other. This is all of our Wonder Woman stuff. Then we're gonna to have to do the same thing with, let's take Batman for instance. We're gonna grab his stats, his info, and his character, and we're just gonna paste him over here. And let's rename this, so we have what do we have? Character info, um, and we're gonna call this character info bat, okay? Now let's call it bats, because that's what the Joker calls him. I like that. And then we're gonna, what do we name this one? This was C-H-A-R image, uh, and that was Wonder Woman, but this one will be bats, and then we'll do the same thing with our stats. Stats, you guessed it, stats bats. <laughs> Okay, so now we have all of those pieces. We're going to want to put those on our canvas or put those inside of our design. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make sure that I select everything here and then just cut it. I'm gonna select our artboard that we're working on and I'm gonna paste it. They paste right into the exact places they should be or at least pretty close. We might have to just move a few things around here. Just like this, okay? So everything is pretty much in place. We'll just finagle the last few things. And then what we wanna do is we want to um, just kind of move everything over a little bit like this for Batman. So again, uh, let's just take our stats of Batman and move them over just a little bit. All of these stats for Batman, we wanna bring down down to 0% opacity, okay? Now what we could do if we were really smart is just group them all together, actually bring those back up to 100% opacity, group those together and call this Batman, and then group all of Wonder Woman's stuff together and call that WW, okay? So let's move those near each other, Bats and Wonder Woman, and then we'll bring the entire grouping of Batman down, and it's you can see it's kicked over to the side. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our animation here. We're gonna take the entire frame and make a component out of the frame. You saw how we did interactive components before. You're gonna see how we do them again. So now we have this interactive component. 
or excuse me, we have this component, we're gonna make it interactive first by adding a variant, okay? So let's name the first one. So our first version is default. Let's call it WW for Wonder Woman. The second one is gonna be called Batman or Bats, right? What are we gonna do for, this, for our Batman version? We're gonna grab Wonder Woman and we are going to, or actually let's start with Batman and we should be able to bring him up all the way to 100% and move his information over into view. Now, some of our things are just a little bit off, so let's grab the stats and just move those back. That'll be interesting looking. We'll see what that looks like once we get there. Then, we're gonna take our Wonder Woman stuff, okay? Um, and let's see, where did it go? There's bats. Aha, Batman, open it up, sorry. Batman. We're gonna take our Wonder Woman stuff and take it down to 0%. And then we're gonna move Wonder Woman off and to the left, okay? Just like that. So you, you'll see one will swipe in and the other one will swipe out. We can come back here and just get a little bit more motion out of our Batman by swinging him over to the side. And now we're gonna do the interactive portion of this where we are going to come into prototype and we're gonna click on Let's see, Batman here, and Batman is gonna lead to, on click, change to. Now this is the, the thing about interact, com, interactive components, is we wanna make sure that we're tapping this change to function. We wanna change it to bats, smart animate, and everything's all good. Okay, great. Now what we wanna do is come in and do the same thing. We're gonna grab our cards here, and Wonder Woman is that second to last one there, so we're gonna make sure she's selected, and drag back and do the same thing, on click, change to Wonder Woman, Smart Animate, and that should be it. So now, we should be able to head over to Assets and find our, everything that's in the animation section, drag an instance of it here. All right, so now we have our prototype. I can still roll over my trailer information, scroll up and down or side to side, and I can select Batman and he'll scroll right on over. I can select Wonder Woman, and it'll scroll right back, which is pretty cool. Well, that's it. Our prototype for our Justice League character site is all done. Um, it works, it prototypes, it's smooth, it looks really, really cool, and hopefully we bring a little bit of awareness to restore the Snyderverse. What did you think of the prototype and what would you have done differently? I wanna know down in the comments, let me know. Also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design and development and prototyping just like this one. So maybe stick around by hitting that subscribe button and the little bell notification icon so you know when another video like this one comes out. Hope you're having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things. Hope you're making amazing things. And I hope that you're doing your part to restore the Snyderverse. See you in the next one.